Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Sarah. I am a full-time hardware manufacturing engineer at Microsoft. I'm 22 years old and I live in Seattle, Washington. If you want to find me anywhere else, I have my Instagram and blog linked below in the description box. Today's video is a very exciting one. I am talking about all the things that I did in college. Sharing all my experiences, sharing what I would recommend for people that are in college or people just looking to pursue other extracurricular projects at the moment. And I want to jump in here to make a quick introduction and give a few disclaimers. I hope none of this comes off as bragging. My intention is to share my experiences, give recommendations, because I remember being in college, being overwhelmed with all the different projects and different clubs I could get involved in and not really knowing anything about what any of those products or clubs would be like. Disclaimer number two, the video is very out of focus, unfortunately, but I try to stick in as many other clips and graphics as possible to take time away from the clips that are out of focus. And note number three is that I'm splitting the video into two parts. So you are watching part one right now. This is about what I did my freshman and sophomore year. And part two will be about my junior year and senior year. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see part two next week or the week after next week. Because I was thinking about sandwiching a vlog in between so that we can diversify the content a bit. But let me know what you think. And that is all for now. Now let's get on to the video. So to give you a little bit of information about me, I went to the University of Michigan, as you can tell from my mug. I majored in mechanical engineering and I minored in computer science and entrepreneurship. And I'm gonna talk about things I did outside of class because to me, classes in college are what creates your toolbox. But then the actual tools that go into this toolbox are found through projects, extracurricular activities, and sometimes classes offer the opportunity to develop these tools as well, especially when those classes are hands-on and project-based. I'm definitely a little biased though because I learn best through projects, through being hands-on, through having the freedom to kind of explore on my own, but also having resources to ask questions and get guidance from when I need to. So with that being said, I definitely think extracurriculars, extra projects are so important in your learning in college. Not necessarily just to put on your resume, but the experience you would get from these projects will build so much confidence, so much identity, and so much value into your experience at college. I graduated college last year, so that was May of 2019, and now I have been working at Microsoft as a hardware manufacturing engineer for about nine months now. I'm gonna go in chronological order, so I'm gonna start off with freshman year. So freshman year was 2015, which is crazy. That is about five years ago now. I went into the first day of college. I had no idea what engineering was. I applied to engineering per the recommendation and advice of people that I looked up to, thinking I was a good fit for engineering. And you know, I went in with the original intention of majoring in chemical engineering or biomedical engineering so that I could apply to medical school afterwards and become a doctor just like the majority of my second generation Chinese American peers. And you know, quickly found out that would not be the best fit for me. Luckily, my freshman year, I took the class Engineering 100 and this is when I started to fall in love with designing and building physical products. The whole premise of this class was to build an underwater robot and it would complete a certain number of tasks and there was a competition at the end of the semester. And I can't describe the amount of fun I had just sticking PVC pipes together, gluing on buoys, um, trying out different combinations to get the best working robot possible. So that's where it all started, where I started falling in love with product design and product engineering. In freshman year, I was also part of WISE, which is Women in Science and Engineering. It's a residential program, so we lived in a dorm. There's a hall that was all girls that were in WISE. Before college, I think I felt most comfortable hanging out with guys, and after spending time in WISE, I officially became a girl's girl, and I am so grateful for that because this is the first time in my life, which I'm really embarrassed to admit this, but it was the first time that feminism was not in a negative space in my head. Because I think growing up, I took in the social cues that you know being feminist was crazy and so frowned upon, which in reality, if you are just someone who believes in equal rights for everyone, then you are a feminist. And just having a community of other women who were also pursuing this field, because there were multiple classes where I was one of two girls in the class, that sense of community was so important in my experience. There were definitely a lot of events when I was in it that I had to drag my feet to because to me, the events felt like the last thing on my priority list when I had a ton of classes and exams to study for. But when I look back, I am so glad that class, that program really shed light on something that was just educating me on being a woman in the engineering field. Another club I joined was a triathlon team and you know, I think it's always good to have some sort of activity that is unrelated to what you were studying because you know, it gets your mind out of it and you meet people from different majors and different groups. 
So yeah, I did that for all four years and it was a great time. You know, I used to be a competitive swimmer. When I got to college, I had a love-hate relationship with swimming. So I was so excited to finally stop swimming. And unfortunately, you know, I realized that with lack of exercise, my body would slowly deteriorate. So I picked up triathlon because I figured it was only one third swimming. Then came the summer of my freshman year. And this summer I went and I studied abroad in China, but the experience was absolutely amazing. You know, it's not so much of, oh, I went to this different country and it changed me because growing up, my family would go spend summers in China pretty often. So it's not like I was going to a completely foreign country. But I think being set on your own, it was the first time I was fully independent because I remember the uncomfortableness I felt when I was being dropped off at the airport by my parents and I was about to hop on this plane all by myself and go across the world and it was really uncomfortable and you know you're completely on your own you're making new friends you're adapting to a new environment on your own and it was such a growing experience for me I think it was really monumental to my college experience I developed a lot of confidence from it that would later pay off when I went to go pursue other projects later on in college I would highly recommend you know, study abroad if you can, or just some sort of experience that puts you completely on your own in college if you've never done so before. All right, now we are moving on to sophomore year. So sophomore year was an interesting one for a semester. I started off taking the class of Mechanical Engineering 250, which is very similar to Engineering 100. It's a design and build class. We had a task to build a robot, to complete a certain number of tasks, and there was a competition at the end of the semester. It was a lot of problem solving, a lot of design, and it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun and this is when I got to meet David who is one of my best friends from college you're gonna hear a lot about him moving forward we did all sorts of projects together for the rest of our college experience so moving on to second semester another class which I also think really set the path I'm on right now which is entrepreneur creativity the class is a very open-ended entrepreneurship class you go in the professor says you know do any project that you want to people did something as crazy as just hanging donuts from a tree in the middle of the campus and observed people so like they did a social experiment and this was the first time that i really got thinking on ideas for myself and this is the first time i started walking around campus and observing problems people were experiencing and started brainstorming how designing a product could fix their problems and what we ended up doing was creating this product named Thettle, which is a combination of the words thermos and kettle and essentially what it is is a thermos that you can carry around everywhere and it boils water on the go so you can make coffee you can heat up water anywhere i always had family or friends visiting from china and in china the norm is to drink warm to hot water they never drink cold water in the regions that i am familiar with so when my friends and family would come visit to the u.s they would always you know fill their thermos up with hot water take it with them and try to make it last as long as they can throughout the day because they hated drinking the cold water from water fountains so i thought making a thermos that way if you just flipped a switch and it boiled water like a kettle, then you could have hot water wherever you go. You could fill it up at the water fountains and heat it up and not have to you know, save your water like you're stranded in the desert for the entire day. And I wish I had my notebook from second semester sophomore year with me, but I'm at my parents' home right now because of the whole quarantine situation. And there were just so many sketches. You could tell the gears in my head were turning this semester and I was getting so excited over all these ideas that I had. It was honestly really empowering to come up with ideas of my own and make them happen into real life. So David and I, and we had a third partner at the time, Paul, worked on Thettle, and we started off by going to this competition called the Makeathon. Makeathon is a 36 hour make and build competition. Basically, you have 36 hours in this building. They have a ton of free resources for you. They have a ton of microcontrollers, circuits, batteries, tools for you to use to build whatever. And at the end of the 36 hours, you pitch your product that you made to a panel of judges. We found this opportunity to be a great time to build our first Thaddle prototype. So Dave and I are the engineers on the group and Paul is a designer, so he was designing the visual aspect of it. And David and I were young baby sophomore engineers who knew nothing about circuits. I remember our first circuit we were trying to make was basically just a battery, wires, and a heating element. We bought this heating plate off of Amazon and we're basically trying to turn this heating element on. And we were working on it for so long and it exploded a couple of times. And finally we hooked it up the right way and we put a piece of toast on it and it heated up so slow. So we literally left it. We walked around, we had no hope that it was going to work. And when we came back and the toast was burnt, we were so excited. It was the most exciting moment ever. 
which I think David probably fell in love with this process a little bit more than I did because he started pursuing electrical engineering as a minor later down the line. Those 36 hours were intense. We were trying to figure things out, learning things from scratch. David slept under the table one night. I slept on the couch, brushed my teeth in the bathroom of that building. And they also had great snacks. So props to Makeathon. It was also one of the best experiences of my life because I would go on to do Makeathon the next year and the year after. Honestly, at each Makeathon, that's the most learning that I ever did per unit time. There were people there that came from different companies that could give you advice. So having that combination of guidance and freedom to explore allowed us to learn so much. And at the end, we made our first prototype of Thetel, which it wasn't the most pleasant looking. It had its guts spilling out because we couldn't fit the circuit in the base. And we pitched it and we won first place. And that was really empowering, really exciting, and gave me a lot of confidence to think, wow, we can do this, we can invent products. I was always the one who was presenting the product. And from this, I learned a ton of presentation skills, speaking skills, and I think having to have those opportunities where I had to speak in front of a large crowd and pitch them something that I made with my name behind it gave me so much confidence and I'm starting to find myself a lot more as time goes on is basically what I'm saying and I found a lot of empowerment through product design. So second semester, sophomore year, I also ran a marathon and I went to another mini study abroad program to Cuba which the mini study abroad program was basically you take a class and it was on engineering with restricted resources and then over spring break we went to Cuba to learn more and be on site. That's also where I met my current boyfriend. I'm trying to share my excitement about product engineering and how much you could learn by exploring these projects on your own. And a great place to start is to just get an Arduino starter kit. And, you know, I didn't know what an Arduino was um, before college. I also didn't know what a Raspberry Pi was before college. These are both basically microcontrollers that are really user-friendly, really easy to use and learn. But yeah, I'll, I'll link some below that you can get on Amazon. You can plug into your computer and you can code in the C language which don't be intimidated by any of this if you don't know any coding because there are a ton of open source tutorials online that you can find. And that is where Dave and I started. We used an Arduino for our very first build of Thetel. Moving on to summer of sophomore year, this is when I got my first internship and I interned with Dana Hare. It's honestly a really good internship. They make it very classroom structured, which I think is perfect for college students. They had weeks set aside where we'd meet up in a certain location, they'd gather interns from all over the country and they would host a week-long class. Our projects really depended on our managers, but my experience was my projects were really structured so that I could quantify them easily on my resume, which this is a pro tip. If you're doing internships now, if you're a college student in engineering or if you're just doing your job and you're looking to touch up your resume, definitely find ways to quantify things in your resume. So for example, if you improve a process that saves 10 minutes a day, then you can use people's hourly rates to see how much money is saved by saving those 10 minutes every day and add it up to see how much money you save the business at the end of the year. You know, having those numbers on your resume is not, is not only going to show the impact you made because you know numbers are a universal language, but it's also going to show that you have a business mindset. So yeah, I'm really grateful that my internship structured my project so that I could get those numbers at the end of the internship and put them on my resume. Guys, everything I have to share for things I did freshman and sophomore year, I'm hoping it inspired you, it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you studied engineering in college, let me know what some of your best experiences were or if you have any questions, I answer all the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Young age, trying to make a bit. Now that I'm up, they all my dick. No contractors, never thrown a brick. Just trying to keep it cool.